Hello and welcome to the last part of this three-part mini-series on probably how to tell a compelling story. I started one with a rant about uh, Dune 2 and where I think it had um, bad storytelling or flat storytelling and bad characters and they wouldn't and couldn't connect with me and I found some answers and I will present them to you today and again the video is called how to write a compelling story and characters you can't stop reading or watching this is for probably books comics tv shows or even movies but in this case this is a comic school i would assume it's for comics so um i had a this is the premise of the video and this is the question. So I was watching Dune last Tuesday and although I kind of liked it part two and everybody said it was a masterpiece, I couldn't and didn't connect with the movie. It left me empty, it left me disappointed and I thought it was pretty flawed and stupid writing. Others might say it's not that way, but it is. And then... Um, a couple of days later, I started watching the um, Amazon TV show Fallout, and I'm a big fan of Fallout, and I started watching it, and I had my problems in the first episode, but episode 2 kicked ass, and episode 3 was slow again, and episode 4 kicked incredible ass, and 4 and 5 are kind of okay, but it drags on. And there are hits and there are misses in this TV show, but this intertwines with the things I will show you today. And it will all make sense, because story and character are not separate. They are intertwined, interlinked, and the one cannot succeed without the other. So if you have characters that are boring or and dull or um, unbelievable, your story premise cannot come to fruition. So it has to click together and both are intertwined. I will show you in a second. Um, and the next question was, and this is what led to this videos, was why was the Fallout 2 TV show so addictive to me or for me? Um, I mean, it's not the best show. It has its flaws. I think the character of Maximus, and we'll see why, um, is pretty dull, but the character of Lucy and of the ghoul are super interesting, as is the setting and the premise, because there, whatever people constructed, and specifically one writer, uh, but I don't uh, know his name, I, I, I've written it down or made a screenshot of it, but the guy who wrote episode 2 and who wrote episode 4, that's the awesome guy. That guy can write. The guy who wrote episode one or three or five or six like those people they don't know what they're doing as good as the, the guy who knows um yeah so let me let me start here with um, a quote from the book um story by robert mckee and uh, robert mckee i guess is a screenwriter and he made a book and this book is really cool and it helped me because he talks about the craft of writing and how you can learn the craft. It's like you decide to become a chef cook, or a chef cook, or you decide to become a movie maker. I think um, a lot of it can be intuition. Then you can learn the craft from other masters or mentors. But this guy has written a book, and he explains what this is about. So it is about structure and character. And let me read you, where is it? Here, the character arc. Um, I mean, he goes in, there, there are two really cool chapters. I mean, this is probably the meat and potatoes of the book. And after that, you go into the construction. And before that, he talks about the industry, the conventions, what people try to achieve, and so on. So he lays out the territory. Then later, he takes you into the trenches, but in the middle, he kind of lays, lay, lays out the plan. So let me read this. 
um, character arc. Taking the principle further yet, the finest writing not only reveals true character, but arcs, but arcs or changes that inner nature, for better or worse, um, over the course of the telling. So, he now talks about the movie, and let me read this to you. In The Verdict, protagonist Frank Galvin first appears as a Boston attorney, dressed in a three-piece suit and looking like Paul Newman, unfairly handsome. David Mamet's screenplay then peels back this characterization to reveal a corrupt, bankrupt, self-destructive, irretrievable drunk who hasn't won a, ca a case for years. Divorce and disgrace have broken his spirit. Um, we see him searching obituaries for people who have died in automobile, automobile or industrial accidents, then going to the funerals of these unfortunates to pass out his business card to grieving relatives hoping to drum up some insur insurance allegation, litigation. This sequence culminates in a, wrench, uh, in a rage of drunken self-loathing as he trashes his office, rips the diplomas off the walls and smashes them before collapsing in a heap. But then comes the case. He's offered a medical malpractice suit to defend a woman lost in a coma. With a quick settlement, he'd make $70,000. But as he looks at his, at his client in her helpless state, he senses um, that what this case offers is not a fat, easy uh, fee, but his last chance of salvation. He chooses to take on the Catholic Church and the political establishment, fighting not only for his client, but for his own soul. With victory comes resurrection. The legal battle changes him into a sober, ethical and excellent attor attorney, the kind of man he once was before he lost his will to live. Who? I mean, let that sink in. I hope I, I read it in a good fashion that you could understand it. My English is not the best. I am an Italian born and raised in Germany. So, yeah, but... Um, in short, this is like um, what the verdict is about. It's about an attorney and he looks good, but he's he's definitely a broken man. Um, divorce and disgrace has broken his spirit. So he's kind of washed up. He hands out um, his cards um, on funerals, like he looks in the papers and goes to the funerals and hands out his card, like really washed up, like bottom of the barrel. But then he finds um, a case, and he could quick he he could do a quick cash, but um, something gets to him, and he takes on um, the wrong doors, and he becomes an ethical, sober man, reborn again. And I think this is a great story arc. So um, not every story. Uh, needs to be like like this but if 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 there is no redemption no 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 growing no no changing from from you know i mean rocky goes from the beginning of, i just call up rocky because that's like what everybody probably knows he's like a washed up boxer wannabe amateur boxer and at the end of the movie sure um he has fought um, the champion and held its ground but the movie is not about that the movie is about growing it's about becoming something else something you always wanted to be or and there are other uh, examples in here like in the godfather um, what's his name um, al pacino the young corleone um, he comes from military. He doesn't want to do anything to do uh, uh, with his family. He wants to to be um, a law abiding, abiding citizen. But then his father dies, and there there is so much pressure on him that he decides he wants to become um, the shepherd of his family. And at the end. Um, I don't have it in my head, but at the end, like the movie, his wife looks at him and the door closes and he's the head of the family now. But here, 
uh, this Michael Corleone changed from an honorable man. Um, I, I guess he won a par Purple Heart and um, Diane Keaton plays his uh, wife. So he is an honorable man that gets then probably dragged down by his families, but his own actions um, and pressure on him reveals his true character. And then at the end, he's definitely on the peak of his might, but he's now morally bankrupt. His soul has fallen into a dark place. He has become a lesser self. And so storytelling is an un unraveling of character and maybe a teaching of what can happen to a human soul, to a human character, when, I don't want to say given the right circumstances, but put in tough situation um, and then it will be revealed what is what is the true character and even that like it's like um rocky finds his self-respect so that's a story about you can become a better version of yourself and this is what you got to do this is who you got to become and that's very imp inspiring uh, a lot of people i would say millions of people look up to the story of the underdog um becoming who he wants to be and uh, then there's the story of with the negative endings where you have like crime doesn't pay but then they shoot up like shooting stars and at the end they lose everything that's like your scarface that's your blow with johnny depp that's probably your donny brasco or you know what i mean so um so story and character is intertwined and let me say like There is definitely uh, the character, character revelation, the character arc, climax and character. So this book also says that um, it says a lot of things, but it, it's really a short book. It's not super thick, um, but it says that at a climax, like um, Robert McKee says that um, media that use time and um, like a picture doesn't use time, so it doesn't need a climax at the end. And this is like his opinion or maybe his study or his uh, the thing he saw. But he says that um, media that uses time, like movies, music, theater, and he doesn't involve comic in here, but I would say comics are also media that uses time. It's not that you see it instantly, like... Um, like a statue or like a picture it's not a static thing it's a thing that develops and envelops itself through time and it needs a climax it could be he also says that there are movies or stories that are anticlimactic but he says that the conventions are the things that have the most success or our mass appealing have the climax at the end and think about your favorite movies about your favorite comics about your favorite um, music pieces i think they start somewhere here and then they go up like minute number one and then they go here and then at the end there's maybe in songs for example a bridge or in movies there's maybe the hero achieves his goal but then everything falls through and he falls to the bottom and then comes the final climatic climactic thing where he or she finally after all the struggle um they don't rely on crutches anymore they have learned so much that they can bounce back. Not in an instant, but they can come back. That's the, the, the final comeback and then the climax. And then usually whatever they had to overcome is overcome and they are a new person. And they are different from the state uh, at the beginning. They are now changed forever and they are either stronger or they are now evil or you know what I mean. Um, And I was missing that climax from, um, for example, Dune 2. And some might say, no, Dune 2 had a, had a really good climax, but I didn't get... I mean, there was a battle at the end, but it was very lackluster. Um, the, the, the Emperor, the, the, 
how do you say Christopher Walken lands there like the, the emperor lands with his old whole shuttles there and then they fight a battle and then within seconds like it's not even a battle like the, the Fremen just walk in and that's it and that's not a climactic scene I mean yeah I don't want to rant about Dune 2 but I didn't like it and the Amazon Fallout show does something different and um, it keeps me hooked and it keeps me coming back but of course there were also some some sh some storylines and um, some episodes that were dragging on and I blame that on the bad writers and again episode two and episode four are just fantastic and I uh, give this credit to the good writer and let's see what they have done right and what they have ro done wrong so why is the Fallout TV show so good? I can't stop watching it, even uh, if I'm tired. And and that's true. I, uh, yesterday I was that tired, and I couldn't stop watching two episodes. Like it was crazy. So why is this? Um, number two. Well, number one was the question. The uh, the uh, question. So number two, I love the characters, and I want to see how they solve the problem or the mystery. Um, these are two things. So the show um, has a mystery or a problem that wants to be solved and the characters are kind of likable, relatable. Um, I care, care for them. So how do you achieve that? Number three, the world is a mystery, a puzzle that keeps getting better and better. Um, you're getting pieces of the puzzle and you try you you you're kind of getting from episode to episode pieces and the picture of the whole world or of the mystery is like um i don't know say but you're completing this puzzle and so you're seeing more and more but the, the answers that then reveal themselves after that get bigger and bigger so you get a nugget and you and you say okay um, this happened. Why did this happen? Then you get a nugget and you say, oh my god, why did this happen? What What is the implication for the next piece that we will find? And then you find the next piece and you think, oh my god, what happened here? How, how could this be? And then the next episode comes around or the next scene and it keeps stacking in a very intelligent way. Of course, if it wouldn't be intelligent uh, and if it wouldn't be good, it would not work. And we'll get to that, how it gets good. Um, and the the characters, at the same time, we have, I will say we have three characters. I, I won't spoil too much, but we have uh, Lucy. She lives in a bunker or she's like a vault member. And she's been raised by her father and her mother. And she's like an upstanding citizen. And she says always okie dokie. And she's very direct and bright. And she has many good qualities. And those qualities get introduced at the beginning of the show. But she never breaks character. And that's wonderful. So um, she gets traits that make her relatable, likable, um, and also understandable. It's 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 a mix of those those things because it's not just like she's a good person. She tries to be a good person, but she has also in a conflict like she wants this. Is it right to have it? Or she's afraid, but she then musters up the courage, or um, something inside of her kicks in that she feels she has the duty to do to do certain things and show. She, bec she becomes very likable because we see those traits she has and maybe relate to them because we have those traits. Maybe we relate to her because we see ourselves in that character. And she also becomes likable, relatable. And also she doesn't break the character because she's going on a search for her father because her father is her, her idol, her, her hero. And we get also the impression that even if this was not about her father, she would still go on the mission to save somebody because that's just the person she is. Like that's her internal inner value. She needs to help. That's the golden rule of the wasteland. 
um, we have to stick together, we have to help each other, we have to good good people. And the beauty of the TV show is she goes to the to the wasteland, and the world up there is not like that. And we see how her how she breaks a little bit or even a lot, but she, even if pressure is applied to her, her moral code doesn't break because she believes in that. And that's not that she's naive or stupid. It's just that she, and that's beautiful. That's that's written cool. She understands how things are, without betraying her own self. And yeah, she gets herself in trouble, but she musters up the courage and she stays on her path. And that what I'm telling you is very important because she is driven. That will be the next point. She has a mission. She she has an internal want. She has a burning desire, and that is in her character arc and that is also in the story and that is what keeps the story going forward but let's wait a second we have to look does this further story or not okay wait a second we have lucy she's really amazing she always says like okie dokie and then we have like uh walter goggins walter goggins as the um ghoul and he's also written beautifully because he was once in the military he fought for america communist co communism is spreading and it's not the world that we know it's an alternative uh, reality where the communists and the americans don't really stop uh, fighting and china is taking over um, i don't know what but they try to invade alaska and the United States annexes Canada and so it's different times like the, the Cold War gets into a hot war and stays hot for a very long time and he's an actor he plays a cowboy and he's very old school like he has a moral code he's not a pushover um, he's a true man but he tries to be a good man um, and, that, and that's cool because he's a total badass but he tries to do the right thing <coughs> for his wife for his family <clears throat> for himself but and he's also polite because he understands he needs to earn and make money to um, feed his family but he's not a pushover he just he has a value and and that's very beautiful it, it just comes out in like the fifth or sixth episode that he believes in values like honesty and companionship and and friendship and mutual respect and freedom so And you get the sense that he really means it because like maybe he's, he comes from poor um, upbringing and he just just a guy that has lived a bit of life and he understands how life is and how he, he treats people how he wants to be treated. And later in the show that, that changes completely and so he gets probably his redemption arc and Lucy kind of mirrors um, that part of him that was lost and then we have the third uh, character that is Maximus and he's uh, a young black guy that gets found um, after this, the destruction of his city by the Brotherhood of Steel um, some technological knights that want to take over or pacify the wasteland and his storyline is absolutely boring and absolutely trash Because we get no cool characterization, we get no sense of who is this person, we get no sense of what does he want. Um, everything we get from him is that he wants to be a knight, but we don't know why. We don't know why this burning wish. Uh, we get flashbacks to his childhood that he was saved by uh, a knight and he looks up to them. But it's a very weak motive and this character gets completely wasted like uh, his storyline probably every second on the screen with this guy is just a waste of energy because 
And the second problem is um, Lucy is very driven. She has a burning desire to, f to find her uh, father and that burning wish, that burning desire, which is very important, we will come to it in a second, keeps her going and struggling through the most insane hardship. And here you have her burning desire. Here is Lucy, um, a na naive girl, uh, but very um, not competitive, very... Um, how do you say? I'm missing the word. She's very able, and but she's not a Mary Sue. It's not like everything comes easy to her. Um, she's well trained, but she can't do everything, and and that makes her very relatable. She 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 knows what she can do, but she knows what she also cannot do. But she's also very open and bright, and so. Here she is, and I would characterize her as able but very naive. She has never been to the to the world um, outside of her vault, but she has a burning desire to reconnect with her father and save him. And then there's the world out here, which is even mightier than her desire. And so there's a battle: can she can she rescue her father and find him? And then something else happens, and then she says no. Nothing will stop me from finding my father and rescuing him. And then something else happens, like the the, 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 the world of the wasteland is very harsh. And so there's a constant battle um, and a constant battle. Can she achieve her goal and she will always be put down and she will always come back. And that's what a story needs. A story need, needs um, a certain outcome something your character uh, that keeps your character growing um, like for maybe for Rocky it was the burning desire to to fight but also maybe to to um, honor his wish to honor then um, his dad trainer and then to become or to 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 do what he said he would have done um, and 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 that creates like the friction it's all like you have here the joker and batman and batman wants to save gotham gotham's soul and the joker is attacking exactly that weak point all of the time um, and also the cowboy also has this because he has certain values we we don't know Uh, about his burning desire we don't know what keeps him going and everybody in the show asks him what keeps you going why are you still around but the show gives you nuggets that he's after someone and then you get ah okay that's why he still sticks around he has maybe some wrong to right and maximum maximus or um the black guy he doesn't have that he's just there and it doesn't advance the story And as Robert McKee says, if um, if the scene, like there's there's a bunch of scenes, okay. And let's see, let's say you have 90 minutes. Let's say you have in this 90 minutes 45 scenes or 30 scenes. Every scene has to be can can the protagonist achieve his goal and what's standing um, in between the protagonist and getting the goal and to get the goal the antagonist needs to crush the protagonist and the protagonist needs to grow through adversity it's like building a muscle and this is this is the beauty of storytelling which i missed a bit in 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 june part two because i i i didn't have the feeling that there were overwhelming odds in which Paul Atreides had to overcome them. And so, I mean, there were challenges, but they didn't feel as insurmountable as uh, the predicaments this cast from the Fallout TV show gets into. And so the maximum storyline is pure, utter trash. And you need a goal, you need a desire, and you need something that stands in between there and lets the protagonist hero uh, of the story grow um, and it can go okay the protagonist can make it and then no you don't make it yes you can make it no but there's um, a climactic rise here because your muscles your ability to overcome hardship 
grow stronger. Um, so for good storytelling, we need... Well, what's the good story? Do you need a protagonist? You need a clear want and desire. Uh, I would say a hardcore burning desire. The character needs to be, in a way, relatable, understandable, and he cannot break character. Because, um, let's say, you have a certain character, and then at the middle of the movie, there is unsurmountable odds, and then from out of nowhere, this character takes a lightsaber and just beats the werewolf. Doesn't make sense. It would break the tension. But if you have a character and at the beginning of the movie it's weak and he wants the girl, but then a werewolf comes out of the woods and hunts him and his girlfriend, then you have a clear goal. The goal is probably survival or something like that. And then um, he can't he can't beat the werewolf, but then he starts to really think about it like it's it's him and me, and he starts to grow. Um, and then maybe he outsmarts him, or maybe he becomes stronger, or maybe it's a bunch of all of this this things. And then we don't know how it ends, but let's say the protagonist at the end of the movie beats that werewolf and kisses his girlfriend, and both then. Um, sink to the ground, um, blood all over their bodies, and they're safe. And then the movie is about to end, and he watches his girlfriend, and she got bitten or something like that. And then the movie ends. Like, whatever. But you know what I mean? You can feel there is some tension in that story. I don't say that it's a good story, but it had it would could have potential for a cool movie with cool scenes and with a cool ending and where you take something from it. And yeah, so you need a character that is re relatable. You need to understand what he wants clearly, how he's going to get that. You need to always apply pressure from real opposing forces on that character so that character becomes like a samurai sword that is kind of um, like a blacksmith is is folding the metal in hard hot in a hard hot flame and i think that is what storytelling is about i hope it made kind of sense what i said here um i will end this video and i wish you a great day and we'll see us in the next video